So let's create customers class. I'll right click, add, and class. And I'll call it customers. Now, since we are going to be, of course, using the customers table, we need to bring in the data from it. And to do that, we are going to get the adapter from the repair services data set. So I'm going to create a variable. It can be private and be used only in this class. I'll call it adapter. And it's going to be a new instance of repair services data set table adapters. But we don't want all the adapters. You can see that we have all the adapters available. The one we want is the customer table adapter. Next one, I'm going to create a property for the error messages. So this can be a shared property, so we don't have to instantiate the whole object in order to access it. So I'll make it public shared, and I'll call it last error. And this is going to be used with the error provider. And the type will be string, we'll simply display an error message. And finally, I'm going to create a variable for a customer row. So this will be coming from the service data set. This is going to be used for the update method as well as for the delete method. Remember, when we are updating a record, we pass in the data that we want to use for the customer. So we will basically update the name or the phone number and such. However, along with the update method for the adapter, we also need to pass in the original data that the customer used to have. That's just a part of the whole method for the update. And it's the same for the delete. We pass in the ID of the customer we want to delete, but also the original customer ID. And these two need to match. Otherwise, of course, we wouldn't be able to delete because that would indicate that we are trying to run the delete method for a customer with a wrong ID. So I'm going to create a variable for that. And it can be simply called original customer row. And it's going to be coming from the repair service data set. Dot, and since it's a row, we just want a single row for a single customer. We have the customer row. Next, let's create a property that's going to be the data table of the items in the customer's table. Basically, this is going to be all the data that will populate the grid view. So it will contain all the information about a customer. So let's create a public property and it can be read only because we will only read from it. We will not use it to modify it. So it can be read only property that I'll call items. And it will return data table of all customers. Since it's read only, let's make it get and get. We will need the table first. So I'll create a table. And this one will come from the get data SQL statement of the adapter. So we'll use the adapter dot get data. So this will run the SQL statement that will select everything from the customer's table and pass it into our table variable. And then we can return it from this property. And we can return it sorted. And let's say we sort it by name. So we'll use table dot default view and then dot sort. And we want to sort it by the column name. And at the end, we of course return the table. And I want one more property, and that's going to be for the next customer ID. Now let's have a look at how the customer's table is set up. And notice how the ID start with 1000, that's the lowest one, and then we move by 10. So 1010, 20, 30, and so forth. So we don't move by 1, and we don't start from 1 and then go to 2, 3, and 4, but instead we start with 1000. This is just an optional thing that I wanted to introduce. In some tables, this is something that companies do. They will have a specific way of doing the IDs rather than just generating them automatically. So we need to have the way to get the next customer ID and we need to increase it by 10. So let's create a property and again, it can be read only. 
and I'll call it next customer ID. And it will simply return an integer or a short. Since it's read only, let's do the get. So the first thing we need to get is the highest customer ID that is currently in the database. And to do that, we can use an SQL statement for. So we'll go to our repair service data set. And here in the customer's table, I'm going to add another SQL. So I'll add a query, which is gonna be SQL statement. And this one will return a single value. It will return the integer that is the highest ID currently in the database. I'll click next. And here, the statement will simply select the max ID. So we'll select max and in parentheses, we'll specify the customer ID from the customer's table. So this will select the highest customer ID available. Click next. And I'll call this get last customer ID. Click next. Everything's okay and finish. So this is the method that we will call from customers to get the latest customer ID. So back to our class, I'm going to create a variable that I'll call last customer ID and it will return or be of type short. And here we'll go to our adapter and call the get last customer ID. And that SQL statement will return it and assign it to our variable last customer ID. Now remember, the lowest customer ID is 1000 and the increment is by 10. So let's create a constant and I'll call it increment value. And it's going to be an integer of short and the value is 10. That's our incremental value. And since we start from 1000, we first need to check if that value is taken because we can start from an empty database and just start entering new values. So we'll do an if statement and check if our last customer ID is zero. And if it is, then there's nothing in the database and we'll simply return thousand. We'll start from customer ID thousand. Otherwise, if there are data, which we do have because we have some dummy data there, we'll simply use the increment of 10 on top of the last customer ID. So we will return our last customer ID plus the increment value. So this will give us the next customer ID to be used. So these are the properties that we need and next we can start coding our functions and methods.